All right, welcome back to the PTZ Camera Operator Handbook. We're already at Chapter 9, and we're talking about camera exposure. The exposure refers to the settings that your camera has for iris, shutter speed, and more to allow you to capture the best possible image with the hardware that you have. And that's what we're going to cover today. How to adjust those camera settings and get your ideal exposure. We're going to look at a couple different tools. In fact, I have this right in front of me. This is a color chart. And we have a color chart here that we're going to be looking at and tuning to our uh, camera to make sure everything works properly. And then I have a couple other small tools we're going to look at, one of them being a white balance filter that you can get online to quickly white balance your cameras. So let's cover high level here. We've already talked about what a PTZ camera is, who uses them, the different types. We went through the IR remote control, many different camera control options and how to mount a PTZ camera. And now it's time to really talk about getting the best picture from your camera. And at the very core level, the iris and the shutter speed are really the very first things that you want to consider while you are working with your camera exposure. Some of the tools that come in handy are a color checker, a gray card, a lot of color checkers, as you can see right here, also include a uh, what's called a gray card. So there's this gray scale here that uh, allows you to kind of adjust the whites and the blacks. Um, so you can get a gray card, a white balance filter that we'll look at, there are things such as vector scopes and waveform monitors that we will take a look at as well in some more advanced software. And the workflow is essentially to set up your camera in the space that you're going to use it, right? Turn the lights on, make sure you're in the exact location that you plan, because lighting obviously is going to change things a lot. Then you're going to configure things. You're going to get everything set up. You are going to plug your camera in, and then you're going to do a white balance, right? You're going to you're going to start to configure your camera, your shutter speed, your iris. Go to the white balance, then you're going to start focusing in on the colors. You're going to do some testing. This is the perfect way to do it. Obviously, you can do everything on automatic if you'd like, but I want you guys to learn the basics behind color matching and configuration. Now, the three main pillars if you want to do this in a triangle is shutter speed, aperture, and gain. Shutter speed each of these, by the way, impacts your image in different ways. So we're trying to find a balance here. The shutter speed is how quickly the shutter opens and closes every second that the camera is operating. So if you have a fast shutter speed, you may get a little bit more of a robotic look. And if you have a slow shutter speed, motions may look a little blurry. So it, it shutter speed kind of changes the way motion looks. Aperture affects the iris. The iris is the opening of the lens in the camera, and it affects how much light is let in. But aperture will, if you have a really wide open aperture, it will change the depth of field versus a small aperture, a very tiny little hole letting light in. And then gain, of course, is a third tool that you can use. It's also sometimes it's called ISO on some cameras, but it will increase the amount of gain that the CMOS sensor or the sensor on your camera uses to interpret the light, but it could increase the noise, meaning pixelation and not quite crystal clear video. So those are the things that we're going to be looking at, and we're going to start right off the bat. You should really be starting with video and PTZ cameras with something called the 180 degree shutter speed rule. And the reason why we want to do this, the reason why this is so important is because we want our video to look smooth. We want our video to look realistic. And in the real world, when you move your hand really quickly, there's some blur. And you're actually seeing that blur right now because the frame rate of my camera is set to the 180 degree shutter speed rule. If your shutter speed is too fast, you don't see the natural blur and it looks unnatural. It looks like a soap opera. It looks funny. So by setting the shutter speed to the 180 degree shutter speed rule, you will ensure that 
your motion in your video will look smooth. It will look right. And this comes from a lot of years of film and movie production and, and video production. So essentially, your shutter speed should be two times your frame rate. One over two times your frame rate. So if you're recording a video at 1080p, right, 1920 by 1080p resolution at 30 frames per second, then your shutter speed should be 1 60th of a second. If you're recording video at 1080p at 30, or sorry, 60 frames per second, then your shutter speed should be 1 over 120. Now let's take a peek at this really quickly from a ceiling camera, from the ceiling camera that we're controlling now. When we go into the menu and we go into exposure, we can see that the shutter speed is set to 1 60th of a second. That is what we want. That is going to give us smooth looking video. If we start to go too high, one thing that we're noticing right off the bat is that less light is coming in. And you can also see that, I don't know how well you can see that, but it's looking a little robotic. There's no motion anymore the way we would want it. And it's also letting less light in. That's because there's a relationship between shutter speed and iris that needs to be balanced. We need to balance shutter speed and iris together. But since we're not doing photography, we're definitely using these cameras for video. We want to abide by the 180 degree shutter speed rule. So it's the best place to start. Say, all right, I'm recording video at 30 frames a second. My shutter speed should be locked at 1 60th of a second. That means all we really need to do is adjust the iris until we get what we like. And 3.4, you know, 4.0, kind of depending on your taste and preference. Um, we want that white to be really white and we don't want it to be gray. So I'm okay with, you know, 2.8, honestly, um, because I want that white over here to be really, really white and I want the black to be still really, really black. I'm okay with that setting right there. I don't need to add a bunch of extra gain. See what happens when I add extra gain? I've got plenty of light in this space. You only use gain if you absolutely need to in a low light situation. So hopefully this is making sense. So this is the process that we're going to go through. Obviously, we're going to set up our lighting because we can't tune the exposure of the camera without doing so. We're going to think about that shutter speed, right? And then we're going to tune the aperture and the gain to match the ideal shutter speed. Then we're going to look at that white balance. And that's the next thing we're going to look at here. We're going to do this together is we're going to say, all right, we're looking pretty good. We got our shutter speed and iris here. Let's take a look at the white balance. Now I'm in automatic white balance mode, but there are many different modes for whether you're indoor, whether you're outdoor. And you can see that this white balancing option is changing things quite a bit. Now this tool is optional. This is actually a white balancing tool that goes on the camera itself, and you actually do the one push white balance with the filter on it. And what that does is it calculates what the white balance should be. And this is just a tool that kind of diffuses the light and helps the camera understand. You can see it did a pretty good job there. Um, so the one push white balance is a great place to start, it's easy to use. You could do a manual tuning of the white balance. And then one of my personal favorites is the color temperature options, where if you are in a studio environment, you can see how it's changing the color temperature. Things are getting a little bit more blue. Things are getting a little bit more white. And I have to be honest here that I am colorblind. So I actually am the worst person to be color matching. And I let my producer do this for me but giving you an idea of the tools that you have available to you. Once you've done that one push white balance or tuned the white balance to your room and you're, that will ha you're happy with the whites and the blacks, then we can move on to the color settings and the color set, or sorry, the image settings. Now the image settings here allow you to do some of these more advanced tunes. So luminance, for example, is going to deal with how much light the CMOS sensor is adding to the image. And usually you can find a pretty happy medium here. Contrast is the blacks and the whites. And you want those whites to be really white, but you also want to be able to see each of those grays here. You should be able to see each gray 
And if, if two of them are blending together, there's, not, there's too much contrast. And if the white isn't looking too, white enough, you've got too much white. So you could use the contrast and the luminance to try to make sure that you're seeing all of those properly. And then you're starting to get pretty good. You know, maybe I want this image to be like a little sharper. I don't want it to be too sharp because then you can see every little detail, but you, know, you want it to be a decent amount of sharp as well. Now, what I'd like to do next is actually show you guys, uh, after we talk about some of the, the intricacies of aperture and shutter speed, I'd actually like to jump into looking at this on a, on a vector scope, which is a really cool way of really seeing the data on the colors and the camera exposure. So we'll do that in just a minute here, but I do want to talk a little bit about aperture, sometimes known as f-stop if you've been in photography classes and before. That's the opening and closing of the iris, restricting the amount of light that's coming in to your camera. Now, these shallow depth of field versus a deep depth of field, that's kind of a luxury that photographers get to play around with because they're just taking a single photo and the shutter speed can be adapted to what they need. But in the terms of video, we really sometimes need to lock that shutter speed. And that shutter speed being the speed that the time it takes for the shutter to open and close each frame. And because we're shooting video, that's just constantly going on and off uh, significantly. So the faster that shutter speed is, the more crisp everything's going to be but it can mess with the blurriness and motion in your video. So we have to be careful with that. Now, the color balance that we looked at, that's changing the colors, including black and white, of what the CMOS sensor or the sensor of your camera is reproducing. And you've got all kinds of ways to change the red and the blue and the saturation and the hue. And all of those tools will allow you to really tune in the color. Of course, we talked about contrast and we want to look at a really want to look at a gray chart if possible that one can really get the gray scale perfect in your images and then there is a tool called noise reduction that i want to take a peek at and what noise reduction will do we go down here is if you're seeing some pixels jumping in and out because you're in a low light environment you can turn on 2d and 3d noise cancellation and noise reduction in order to get rid of what some people call hot pixels that appear sometimes in brightly colored spots in your image. Now, we're not getting any of those now. This is a very well-lit studio and the exposure is already tuned properly. But what I'd like to do next is take this image that we're looking at right here and I want to show you what it will look like inside of a color chart. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open it up into a vector scope. So this is the image we were just looking at. Now, not everyone may have access to this. So I'm just going to cover it from like a high level here. But uh, you can see there's a little bit of color correction already happening here. But essentially, in vMix, you do have the option to use a waveform monitor. And a waveform monitor plots the colors on this chart. And if we kind of change it a little bit, you can see it's moving left and right. Uh, of course, I'm no good at this. I'm colorblind, but it allows you to kind of see if the image is clipping a little bit. Yes, it is clipping a little bit. See, that's kind of where we would want it. I actually have, usually I have a little bit of black stretch on here. Let's see what happens when we stretch the black a little bit. Usually I have a little bit of black stretch on there and you can see what's happening in the color correction chart here as we bring things up and down. So just giving you an idea of what a vector scope is and then what a waveform monitor is. So this, this is the waveform monitor now, and it's the counterpart to the vector scope, and it handles brightness and exposure. So we can see here, the image is clipping a little bit. It's not quite in a full range that we would like. Uh, the blacks are getting a little bit crushed, and the waveform monitor will allow you as a camera operator to have the ability to adjust the image so that your camera can get the best exposure before it hits your video production software. And we're looking at vMix right now, obviously. Um, so it's a, vMix is a great tool. I use this tool all the time to do video production. Um, and you know we're looking at the waveform monitor, which I've got right here. Um, and then if we look at the vector scope, let's cut 
to this um, full screen here. Whoops. There we go. Cut to this full screen. If we go to the vector scope, this is more of a chart that is showing you the colors and whether we are getting the true color representation. It helps us almost like an X and Y graph where the color accuracy of the live video feed is displayed on top. And you might see Scion in green, and it's, it's great for color correction software. And vMix actually gives us the tools to do all of this color correction up here. Now, again, I'm colorblind, so I really can't do a whole lot with this. But if you thought, hey, I want that red to be just a little more red, and then you have the lift, the gamma, and the gain, right? So the top and the middle, the mids and, and the lows, the lows, the middles, and the highs. And you can kind of turn off and on the color correction tools. So if color corrections are something that is, you know, kind of bothering you and you're going, you know, I need, I need to get this color correction done better, that is the tool for you. That, that's what you want to be looking at um, to really get the, the, the tools correct. So really quickly, following the 80 degree shutter speed rule for our key takeaway, start there. Then tune the shutter speed and the iris right so that we get that correct exposure at a base level you can use a color checker to tune your white balance you can actually just use a white piece of paper uh, if you don't have a gray chart and at least get that one push white balance done for your camera and then if you really want to go to the you know the highest level you would go to that waveform monitor and that vector scope so i hope that was helpful for you guys our next chapter is chapter 10 in the ptz camera operator handbook I'll see you guys there.